everyone, Christian here, and this is going to be a vlog about why almost all Phoenix you see in cultivation are going to be hybrids. So, uh, the Phoenix genus, you know, has about a dozen species or so, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. That's off the top of my head. Uh, just about a dozen. And the ones that I've noticed around here in Florida, and this is this is pretty much goes for around the world in cultivation, um, I've noticed that seeing a pure species of phoenix can often be uh, very hard. And there are a few exceptions. So um, the nature of phoenix is such that they are dioecious, so they have either female or male uh, flowers. So they require, so a female requires another male to, uh, to pollinate and produce viable seed. And as a result, pretty much any species of phoenix will be able to pollinate a, a male male uh, plant will be able to pollinate a female so when you see canariensis growing around or phoenix reclinata growing around um, a lot of them don't have the trunks the trunk girth that they really should have as a uh, you know as a pure species you know, most of the can like for example let's see if we can come across some uh, some phoenix here of course there's a, a ton of phoenix that grow in uh in Florida, but yet, and this little stretch of land, there aren't really any. But uh, as we're looking for some, we're going to uh, discuss most of the canary. If you look at canary, Phoenix canariensis in the wild, yeah, on in the Canary Islands, which they which are well protected and kept away from any other phoenix, they have extremely massive trunks. I mean, they are huge, and as a result, you know, you see the stuff that grows around here, and you will find that the trunk girth is maybe like 40% of what it should be. And uh, the same goes for things like Phoenix reclinata. You will see them kind of dwarfed or they will have bigger trunks as a result of hybridizing with say canariensis. And then they, these plants can again, will have a male or female assignment. And there's, some, there's a canariensis that's very skinny there, a few over here on the left. And none of these are pure. They're all hybrids of some sort. Uh, that could hybridize with Sylvestris, and these hybrids can hybridize with other hybrids, and just create this like single hybrid. Here's some more here to our right, and create this single uh, hybrid palm that looks a little bit like Canariensis, some like Reclinata, maybe like Sylvestris. Um, and so, unfortunately, as we grow more and more Phoenix, we are going to get less and less purity. Now, the good news is is that in habitat. For example, the Phoenix sylvestris, which grows mostly in India, North India, Phoenix canariensis, which is native to the Canary Islands, and things like Phoenix dactylifera, which grows mostly in desert regions of the Middle East and Egypt. Well, Egypt is part of the Middle East, but um, another canariensis that's not fat, fat enough to be pure there. Um, they are really kept away from other uh, species, and so they keep their purity. And if you really want to see the best looking uh, specimens of a certain species of phoenix, you might want to go visit them in the wild. Same goes for Phoenix reclinata. It's called the Senegal date palm. It grows throughout most of West Africa, though. And um, so, when you are, if you want to grow and have a nice canariensis and a nice or nice reclinata, um, you're going to want to get seeds from that are collected from habitat if you can. Now they're not protected that you can't collect seeds. They're just you, you can't plant other species of phoenix in the area, and rightfully so, you want to protect a, you know, a, ha a habitat. Um, but, you know, and, th and this can happen with a few other palms, but it's very noticeable in phoenix because it is a diverse uh, genus. You can, you can have, you know, a, a solitary trunked, um, you know, a huge canariensis, or you can have a thinly trunked uh, robolini. Now, a couple exceptions to this rule I've noticed are that a Phoenix Robolini tends to kind of not hybridize a whole lot, although it does. It doesn't hybridize as much with the other species that I've discussed. And Dactylifera, I think it might be just because of its height, doesn't seem to hybridize as much. When you get Dactylifera seed, it tends to become a Dactylifera. So here's another classic Phoenix, like a very skinny trunk here. And looks nice, but it's it's not nowhere near pure. And uh, as a result, you just kind of have a, a phoenix, we call them SP. And they might be soulless canariensis because they look like a, look like that when they're younger. But 
who knows what they're going to look like when they're older. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where you never really know. It's like, it's literally like, like Russell Stover, uh, chocolates. You have no idea which one's going to be which until you really, you know, bite into it or so to speak, grow it up. So, um, I think that, you know, if you can, if you are willing to start from seed, you have a much better chance of getting a pure species, unless you can see a mature, uh, palm and see its girth and see, you know, its proper leaf structure. Because Reclinata, for example, has a, you know, a bipinnate leaf, um, or just a pinnate leaf, but I'll see them with plumose leaves, and that's just not typical of any, uh, Reclinata. And so, you know, they'll be advertised as such, because they'll be advertised as the palm that they resemble the closest, the species they resemble the closest. So, anything, a, hy a Reclinata hybrid is going to look like a, um, you know, I mean, if it looks like Reclinata, they're going to sell it as Reclinata. If it looks like Canariensis, they're going to sell it as such. So, uh, but they will rarely look like the, um, you know, the pure, real uh, species you were, you were uh, looking for. Sorry. Uh, oftentimes during these vlogs, I, you can get a dry mouth from talking too much. And as I've been told before, I have the gift of the gab. And, um. Yeah, so <laughs> my mouth goes dry. So yeah, you know, here's some Robolinis, and you won't, if you see, some of these hybrids are actually quite desirable. Um, if you can hybridize, say, Canariensis with Robolini, you get these very thick trunked, very uh, full crown uh, palms that actually command a high price because they are like a perfect specimen for like a, a, like a central location. So if you wanna put a, one big palm in an area, uh, but they they often are a lot tidier looking than Reclinata, and they're a little bit easier to control, and they just kind of have a more uh, regal look. Where Reclinata is more of a daintier trunk, and wow, that is a nice butia. I wish I could turn around and show it to you guys. Um, but yeah, they uh, you know here's more Robolinis, and you won't see a lot of Robolini hybrids. When they are hybridized, they're going to look more like Canariensis. They they take on usually whatever uh, species they they've hybridized with. So here's some other Phoenix. I'm just kind of crawling through this little area of South Venice uh, just to kind of find some other, you know, looks like we might have, uh, there's more Robolini. But a lot of these, you, you won't see Phoenix being planted a whole lot in the future, I believe, as well, at least in Florida, because of the issues that uh, that plague them, such as Ganoderma, uh, which is a virus that it comes from the soil, Fusarium wilt which is a, uh, another virus that basically causes crown rot. And uh, that getting struck by lightning um, and <clears throat> uh, just general like high humidity can cause issues. Uh, and yeah, palm, palmetto weevils will come and destroy the plant as well. And I've just seen so many very expensive canariensis or what would be expensive canariensis uh, and other plants, other, other reclinatas. I had a friend who had to you know, chopping down and getting rid of a Reclinata uh, clump is quite expensive. So factor that into, you know, your Phoenix purchase. Obviously, if you live in a location where Phoenix, you know, are, are th thriving, such as like a Mediterranean through a desert region, you know, those are some of the best palms to grow in those areas. And I don't fault anyone for trying that out. Here in Florida, there, we have other options because we have our more uh, subtropical climate, um, you know, bordering on tropical. Uh, it, they really do make for a. They 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 really there really are many other options that can be uh, had, and so I don't recommend Phoenix for Florida, maybe North Florida, but Central Florida, South Florida. Um, I think that there's a lot of other options. You don't want to invest your money into because it is an investment. You know, if you put it in your, if you're going to put it in your yard, you know, eventually that palm will add to the say sale price of your house. So. Anyway, that's going to be about it for my uh, little Phoenix discussion, why most of them are going to be hybrids. hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel and want to see more palm reviews and palm discussions, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification. I go live quite a bit and we, we discuss palms and you will get that notification that I've gone live. And um, if you have any questions about Phoenix hybridization and what is pure and what's not pure, leave it down below. And I will talk to everyone next time. Thanks for watching.